we had the RMRs, didn't we? We all we all saw the RMRs, and uh, we were watching them. And Astralis didn't get through the RMRs, and then didn't get through the last chance qualifier for the RMRs either. It was a real surprise. I think people were like, "Look, Astralis aren't very good right now. They're betting into uh, you know two new players, but they got the, the super team dream is going to come good at uh, some point." And they were just diabolical. And we did a whole stream about it. And we talked about how ultimately Blame F was going to carry the can. And Blame F was going to carry the can because it wasn't just the nature of the fact that they went out or the fact that they've underperformed with him as IGL pretty much for as long as he's been IGL. You know, they haven't come close to winning a trophy. Apart from that, what was it, that little festival thing they did in Denmark, which is more like an exhibition match. Anyway, they had ample opportunities to be at this major. I think it's like the fourth one they haven't qualified for in a row now. They've been hemorrhaging millions because every time you don't qualify, you miss out on the stickers. And so obviously something had to give. You know, they spent $2 million bringing in Stown and Yabby, aka Stabby, to come into Astralis and be part of this super team. And that's how it was being framed. We finally got the Danish super team together. And so obviously as the IGL, you've got to do something with those pieces. Now, I did point out in that other video that the other players weren't really helping. Like, Stown was the most giga-boosted player in the HLTV rankings from last year. And Yabby's not played well. Stown and Yabby haven't played well since they've joined. And I talked a lot about Device and how Device tweeted out, oh, not having fun. And so you knew something was off in the team. And so my argument was, okay, definitely scapegoat blame F. He pretty much sealed his fate when he, you know, I'm not saying he refused, but as we now know from the Talking Counter podcast, they were asked, like, will Device or Blaine come and do the exit interview, either one of them, and whoever took the request said, no, you're not getting either of them, and so they sent out Stair, who is the youngest player on the team, the one who's been performing the best, but, you know, he's like 19 and he went and did an exit interview. And at that point, Blame F was cooked. He was done. Because the narrative, which, by the way, I agree with, but the narrative was he's an IGL on the server, but nowhere else. And it's not working on the server, so fuck it. That was that. So he went. Astralis bench Blame F after RMR fiasco. By the way, I do have to say... HLTV using the word fiasco to describe an Astralis underperformance is very, uh, very surprising. But that's how strongly they put it. And fiasco is accurate. It was, it was just a diabolically bad series of performances. All the players were playing terribly. There was no cohesion. They looked nervy. Um, and in the end, you top that off with a steadfast refusal to address the fans. So, you can just see here, you know, confirmation as to what happened. Uh, Benjamin Blame F. Bremer has been moved to the Astralis bench. The Danish team have announced Blame F, a top 20 player since 2020, has supported the Red Star since November 2021, but the team's success has been hard to come by as Astralis have uh, qualified for just one major in four attempts. The obvious thing here is fair enough. But the problem remains, who are you going to go out and get? And who can do a good job with the pieces they've got when the players aren't playing particularly well? And that was when I came up with the idea of, oh, right, it'll be fun to analyze and speculate and who are they going to get and, you know, who's going to fit in and what kind of job are they going to do? Well, Astralis wasted no time. They wasted no time in announcing what the new plan was and i was genuinely surprised in the direction they went because as you can see there welcome bro i was like oh for for me no the player bro you can see the homecoming of bro as device takes over as igl and i was like oh because here's the thing i mean why bring in a rifler not as good as Blame? Bench Blame 
and then you've replaced Blame as IGL, why not just have Device be IGL? Why not make that announcement? Just Device takes over as IGL. And you go, okay. You know, you could have just done that. But no, they've benched Blamer and brought in this bro character. So it's, uh, it's a downgrade. Now... I'm not going to get into what they say about Bro. Uh, you can see I'm insanely happy to return to Astralis. Obviously, you did like Astralis talent and all that. I know what I'm talking about when I say it's a fantastic organization. L lol. And it really hurt to see the Mr. Major because I know how much it means to everybody here. However, it's opened up opportunities for me, and I will do everything to show I'm the best choice for the team. They know what they're getting, and I know what it means to play here and be part of Astralis. Although I have the utmost respect for playing alongside such skilled players and the pressure of being here, I also know I can make a difference. That's who I am as a person and as a player, and I'm just insanely excited to get started. Now, the thing I want to focus on is this device takes over as IGL. And nobody's talking about what actually has happened here. And so I want you to I want you to understand device has stitched up blame here. 100 percent i'm like i'm uh, there's no doubt in my mind based on the timeline right so i want you to let's revisit okay the now infamous device tweet i made a big point of this in the last uh video where i was saying what is the benefit to your team for putting this out and saying not having any fun playing whatsoever at the moment which is seen on the performance really disappointed and sad this was in the middle of the rmrs right so here's the thing that right there tells me everything i need to know actually about what's happened because i've been around esports a long time i know what players are like and i know how star players manipulate time and space to get what they want every single fucking time and the community they always get the wrong reads on it they're always 180 to where they need to be like for example when device needed a legitimate mental health break in an ip and then was trying to come back into the team and was willing to play but nip didn't want to have to pay his salary so it was just better to have him on the bench because they could get the swedish government to pay a lot if not all of it right for the time period he was on the bench people were saying fuck device he's fucked over nip that's what people were saying then it's like no now they're gonna go oh it's sad because he's not having fun <laughs> he's not having fun there you you never tweet that in the middle of a tournament i don't give a fuck if you tweet it afterwards i don't give a fuck if you do the little you know you, you look a dickhead but if you want to do the cristiano ronaldo and portugal went out the fucking world cup and fucking he walks down the tunnel into the dressing room and has a cry by himself instead of like waving to the crowd pointing at some of the young and upcoming players that are going to take over you know if you want to look like a fucking narcissist that's totally up to you but at the end of the day, you don't tweet this in the middle of a tournament. And he should have been told to delete that, and he should have been sanctioned by the org. But it's device, so that's never going to happen. Now, what does this tweet tell me within the context of what, what was happening? The problem is device and blame. They're clearly not getting along, not vibing. Blame F's calls aren't making, you know, devices and having fun. So that now is something you have to think about as an IGL. And I'm guessing somewhere along the line, probably before the RMR, Blame F, it was in, either intimated or directly expressed to Blame F. If you don't get us to this major, we're going to fucking, ch we're going to do a change up and device is going to take over as the IGL or we're going to bench you. And that explains the trepidation because obviously device isn't incentivized in that situation to play well because clearly he believes he can be the IGL, doesn't he? He thinks he's ready for it. And so now I realize within the context of blame being dropped and then this little interview that they put out, device has a huge desire to become the IGL. Ah, does he now? Does he now? Right, interesting. Okay, very interesting. And you can see here, this was the interview with their new... The replacement for Casper shit is Casper Straub. Oh, you just have to... It's Denmark. You, you, have, uh, you have to hire... So everyone you hire has to be called Casper, I think. I think you have to have a Casper quota, basically, or you, you're not allowed to... You're not allowed to operate in Denmark. You know, like some fucking bureaucrat comes around with a clipboard. Like, uh oh hello how many caspers have you got i don't know what i don't know what accent that was borderline jamaican wasn't it but whatever you get the point don't need to hammer it that's why richard lewis is the comedian 
Uh, yeah, and they pull their fucking tape measures out. Oh, this is an excellent neck, Mr. Device. Very good. Very good snack. Don't, again, not Danish. Can't Accent's not my strong point, not, but you get the point. Anyway, this is what one of the many Caspers had to say. I see a player who is super, super, super motivated. Okay, well, let's start there. <laughs> like, again, you see, I do this. I like to engage with reality, which is obviously a problem in esports. But this is the guy that was tweeting mid-tournament. No fun, very sad, big accident on road, send Bitcoin, right? So how's that motivated? He himself is expressing demotivation. But you say he's so fucking motivated that you've gone super, super, super motivated, which, as you will notice, that's two more supers than being super motivated, which I would have assumed super motivated is, like, the most motivated you can be, but apparently you can be three super, super motivated. So, okay, cool. Being the IGL is a huge decision, and it's not something that Nikolai decided overnight. No, it's, I'm very sure it's been in the pipeline for a long time. Every time you've lost with blame, he sat there going, this shouldn't be happening to me. I can do better. It, the pressure should be mine. The pressure should be mine. That's what he was thinking the entire time. So it's only blame Fs by chance. Right? He's gone Boromir, hasn't he? So it's something that he had been considering and something I've been discussing with him ever since I got to know him because he saw it as a natural progression in his career. So again, let me translate that into just normie speak. What's happened there is they got super pissed off with blame. Device has said, it, I, can't do, I can't do this anymore. Uh, it's shit, isn't it? Uh, you know, everyone's calling him a beta. The strats aren't good. We're not winning games. But he's been a top 20 player every year, so I guess this is okay. And then the new guy who's coming as a director of sports has gone, yes, yes, they're there, Device. You're the star. You get everything you want. If it's a choice between you and him, there's no choice at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to empower you. You will be the next IGL. But we've got to give him a chance. We've got to get to this major. Let's not rock the boat now, Boromir. Right? Let's not rock the boat now. Just keep the hobbits safe, okay? And we'll see what happens, right? Well, we all know what happens, right? Except in this metaphor, blame F's the one peppered with arrows. That's what that means, right? Then they explain away the completely unacceptable tweet by saying, I think what we should take from this tweet is that he wasn't satisfied with the way we played, which I believe was the same for all the fans watching and all of us in the office because we weren't happy or satisfied either. That's what should be taken from it. But that's not what he said. He didn't say, I'm not satisfied with the way we're all playing right now when I take responsibility and let's go get this bread and we're going to win the RMR. He said, I'm not having fun. And me not having fun makes me play bad. <laughs> that's what he said. So basically what he said there was, fuck the team. Fuck actually keeping this bottled up inside to be a professional so we can get across the RMR, he felt the necessary need to go public that he's not having fun to explain to his fans, not necessarily Estrella's fans, but his fans, don't judge me on the fact I'm playing bad right now. I'm not having fun. Someone is not making me have fun. Wink, wink. I wonder who that could be. So now, Estrella's management, by the way, are signing off on that type of behavior they're saying it's actually all right if you're a star player on astralis to come out in the middle of a tournament and say something ridiculously unprofessional and throw your teammates under the bus so that sets sort of a oh i don't know dangerous precedent for somewhere in the future perhaps but okay i've seen nikolai now and there is a huge spirit in him and a desire to succeed in astralis that's why he returned there's nothing that forced nikolai back well, that and the fact he was completely done at NIP, but fair enough. As he also stated in the announcement, he's doing what he loves most, and he will continue to do so as long as he can. Again, thought he wasn't having fun, but now he loves it. You can't get any greater commitment from a player who could choose anything over being at Astralis. So, basically, the long and the short of it is, Device decided, I'm the IGL now. I'm, I, I'm taking over. And what you can glean from the statements uh, is that actually, yeah, like blame was kind of fucked over. Uh, that that I mean, 
it's it's clearly what went on. Device and Blaine didn't fuck with each other. Because equally, there's no reason to bench Blaine if it's just a change of leadership. It isn't. There's beef. There's beef. Because why the fuck do you bring in Bro, right, to replace Blaine? Right? It's, you know, and, and also, there's so, this is how much Device has got his own way here at fucking Astralis. So first of all, we know that Stair was a device choice. I know everyone, all, I, I say this all the time. Device was playing, he was like duoing and face it with Stair, and he vouched for Stair and said, and wanted Stair when he went there. And everyone goes, no, 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 that was Buzz. That was the, that was Buzz. He did it about both guys, right? So stop fucking correcting me on that, you fucking tedious pricks, okay? Because I read this shit, because I talk about this shit from pennies, which have just got some. Thanks, Jerky. Appreciate the 20 gifted subs. He did it about both. And what that tells you is that actually Device gets to call the roster by and large as well. Said it about Buzz. Said it about Stare. Right? Like, okay. So Device gets to be the leader. Gets to get the players. Blame F definitely failed as an IGL overall. You can't really say otherwise. But the idea that Blame F has nothing to offer as a rifler. And so we're going to bring in Bro, who's nowhere near as good as Blame F, uh, just so the, the fucking stabby combo can get their roles when, by the way, they're playing like shit. Really makes you think, doesn't it? So we can now say, basically, Device is running the show at uh, Astralis. Which might not be a bad thing, actually, because I do want to point this out, right? Casper Strauser, they did that thing where Astralis did a statement uh, on their website, and we, you, you saw it earlier, but they completely fucked up the announcement of Bro, because they're incompetent, and they don't actually watch the games, and by the way, this should make you deeply concerned, right, <laughs> if you're an Astralis fan, because this is where they're at, right, in the original announcement, before they edit, edited it, they said, uh, our top priority has been to find a player who can step into the team and create space for the other four to move into their favorite positions, Bro fits perfectly here. He was a standout player on the extremely successful talent team and chose to seek international experience after his run on the talent squad. It's fair to say he has succeeded with some extremely impressive performances, including a great run in the Paris Major. And you will notice that bit is highlighted in red. I took this from KRL's Twitter. Thank you for highlighting it in red for me, KRL. Love you, miss you, legend. You might have missed the problem, right? Bro wasn't on Monty at that time, right? He wasn't part of that Monty lineup. Do you want to know where he was at at that time? Astralis talent. So the new sports director for Astralis doesn't even know when players played for Astralis. I don't know, guys. Can we, can we get with a fucking program like... It's been non-stop failure and humiliation since, like, 2019. Like, can, can we stop now? It's, it, I, I, even I'm bored of it now. I fucking can't stand your org. I love shitting on you all day. Gives me strength. But even I'm getting bored of it now. Can you just, like, hire fucking competent people? Fucking hell. So anyway, what they did was, because it's Astralis and they can never take the L, and now they'll probably end up doing a video explaining that, oh, what I meant was Bro Ross or something. They changed it. They just changed it thinking nobody would notice. So they just did a, they did a little stealth edit, right? He was a standout player on an extremely successful talent team and chose to seek international experience after his run on the talent squad. It's a pleasure for us to complete the circle and bring a former talent player back to the main team in this way. So you got it right the second time. Excellent stuff. Now, I'm going to end it by talking about how I think they're going to do. And I think Device is going to learn the fucking hard way that being an IGL and an AWPA is shit. And being an IGL of a top team is shit and difficult, and he's got no experience doing it. And also, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I don't care that you broke your elbow. No, I'm going to say this. I don't think that if you are somebody with a history of having to take breaks to look after yourself and self-care, and there's nothing wrong with that, totally support it. But if you are somebody with stress triggers... 
being the leader ain't for you. That's the last thing you should put in your life. And the problem with that is if you get stressed and it causes you to have a problem with performance, problems with communication, health issues, then guess what happens next? It spills over into the team. So this is a potential disaster for Astralis and Astralis fans. And I think they will have to correct it and make a long-term decision about who the leader's going to be. And they will need to go out and recruit a leader. So this is, feels like almost like a Band-Aid. They'll limp through this year, and that'll be probably the end of it. And then they'll have to ha get a new IGL in and probably drop Bro and put him on the talent team again. So, uh, I don't know, just a fucking disaster. And hopefully that gives people a bit more sympathy for Blame F. He's been done dirty here. He definitely needed to be cut as IGL. Maybe you can make an argument for benching if you're going to bring in a real IGL. This, this is garbage. This is bullshit. This is a, this is a Hail Mary because Device gets to have his way at Astralis.